Hello students, welcome to Math Made Easy. Let us solve one word problem based on linear equations in two variable. And the question is based on speed, distance, time. And the question is, a man travels 370 kilometers partly by train and partly by car. If he covers 250 kilometer by train and the rest by car, it takes him four hours. But if he travels 130 kilometer by train and the rest by car, he takes 18 minutes longer. Find the speed of the train and that of the car. So in linear equations in two variables, word problem students, in the last line, mostly they will be asking us to find two different things. So basically what we do is always, whatever the two different things they are asking us to find, we assume it as our two variables, that is X and Y. So in this question, they have been asked us to find the speed of the train and speed of the car. So we are going to assume here, let the speed of the train be x kilometers per hour and the speed of the car be y kilometers per hour. So our first step will be, we are starting with the solution. So we wrote our two steps. Let the speed of the train be x kilometers per hour and the speed of the car be y kilometers per hour. Whenever you assume anything, students, as x and y, always do write the units of whatever you have assumed. Here we have assumed speed, hence we are writing the unit of speed. Now we'll read the condition. We'll read the question again step by step. So the first line is, a man travels 370 kilometers partly by train and partly by car. So the total distance the man is traveling is 370 kilometers. But this 370 kilometers, he traveled by train and car. Next line, if he covers 250 kilometers by train. So if he covers 250 kilometers by train and the rest by car. So the rest means what students 370 minus 250 and it is 120 kilometers. So it is 250 kilometers by train, 120 kilometers by car. Then the total time which is taken, the total time which is taken to reach the destination, to reach the, to cover the total distance is four hours. So now here we have to make the equation. Now, in the sum based on speed, distance, time, if you have a doubt of how to make the equation, we always search for out of given speed, given distance, and given time, what do we know in total? Like, do we know the total speed? Do we know the total distance or the total time? Whatever total we know, we make the equation in that particular unit. For example, in this sum, we know the total time, the time taken by the train and the car, the total time is four hours. So we are going to make equation with the base of the time. That means the equation will be made as time taken by the car and plus time taken by train, which is equal to total time that is four hours. Now, what is the uh, formula to find Time. The formula for speed is equal to distance upon time. If you have a problem in remembering the formula, it's very easy. I'll give you one trick how to remember the formula of speed. Just remember the unit of speed. What is the unit of speed, students? Kilometer per hour. This is the formula. So speed is equal to kilometer, that is distance, hours, that is time. So we get speed is equal to distance upon time. Now we want time to be alone in the left hand side. So we'll shift time in the left hand side, speed will come this side, it will go down. So hence we get the formula of time as distance upon speed. That means distance covered by car is, sorry, time taken by car is distance upon speed. So distance uh, covered by car is 120, speed of car we have assumed one. And distance of train is 250 and 
feet we have assumed is x is equal to 4. So this is the equation which we are going to write. This was just the explanation, students. So let me rub it and we are going to write it again neatly. So our next step is, here the speed of train is x kilometers per hour and the speed of car is y kilometers per hour. So we are going to write from first condition. I'm going to skip uh, the video of me writing the step because it's already a very big sum and I don't want the video to go too long. So I will be skipping the part where I am writing the step, okay? So the next step uh, we are going to write as from first condition, from first condition, time taken by car plus time taken by train is equal to four hours and accordingly we'll substitute. So hence we get a step 250 by x plus 120 by y equal to four. We can reduce it by the table of two, but uh, let us first solve it further because we also need to convert it into linear equation. Because as you can see here, the X and Y are in the denominators. So this is not in the linear form. So we are going to substitute and resubstitute. So when we do that, at that time we will reduce. Before, see, don't be in a hurry to reduce the equation. You have to first observe both the equations. Sometimes what happens is, uh, if we don't reduce the equation, we can easily make it equal by multiplying any one term to any equation. So let us keep it as it is, okay? So we are going to mark this as equation number one. Now, similarly from the second condition, now let us first read what is the second condition given. Second condition says that if he travels 130 kilometers by train, now this time it is 130 kilometers by train, and the rest by car. So that means 370 minus 130 will give us 240 kilometers. So it's 240 kilometers by car. Then the time taken is 18 minutes longer. So here we are using the same formula and the same method to make the equation. So it is time taken by train. So it will be 130 by x plus 240 by y equal to 18 minutes longer. So it is four hours, 18 minutes. We'll convert that four hours, 18 minutes into fully hours. So it is 130 plus x plus 240 by y, four hours as it is, plus 18 minutes converted into hours is 18 by 60. So this is uh, six threes are and six tens are. We'll cross multiply it. I'm going to the next page. So we get it as 130 by X plus 240 by Y is equal to when we cross multiply, we get 4 into 10. That is 40 plus 3 by 10. 40 plus 3 by 10. So hence the final equation we get is 130 by X plus 240 by Y is equal to 43 by 10. We are going to mark it as equation number two. Now let us substitute. Let one by x, this is the way students, we are going to reduce the equation, convert it into linear. So whenever x and y are in the denominator, we cannot say that it is linear because when we bring that x and y up, the power will change to negative. So 130 upon x, we can write it as 130 x raised to minus 1. The moment we get the power as minus 1, we, we, we can't call it as linear. So whenever x and y are in the denominator, this is the way to solve it. So we will convert it. Let 1 by x equal to any variable. Let us take it as m. And you can take it a, b, c, d. Except x and y, you can take any alphabet. And 1 by y is equal to n in equation 1 and 2. Now let us convert this. So we'll look at the first equation. It's 250, 124. So we are going to write it as 250m 
plus 120n equal to 4. Let us check. 250, 124. Correct. And the second equation as 130m plus 240n equal to 43 by 10. Now this 43 by 10 students, we can write it as 4.3. So we'll mark it as equation 3 and equation 4. Now look at both equations and tell me which variable is having exactly equal coefficient. No variable, right? M is having 250, 130. They are not equal. N is having 120 to 40. They are also not equal. Can we make any coefficient easily equal by multiplying any one number with any term? Answer is yes. When we multiply 120 with 2, we will get 240. So let's do that. So it is equation 3 multiplied by 2. The whole equation. What do we get? 2 into 250. It's 500m plus 2 into 120, 240n. 2 into 4, 8. We'll mark it as equation number 5. Now here we can see that Equation 4 and equation 5 are having exactly same term with same coefficient. 240n, 240n. So we are going to reduce, cancel it. By doing what we will cancel? Adding or subtracting. So we look at the sign. 240 is having plus. 240 is having plus sign. Plus and plus, that means same sign. Same sign means subtracting. So let us subtract. Equation 4 minus equation 5. You can do 5 minus 4 also. So when we subtract 130m plus 240n is equal to 4.3 and 500m plus 240n is equal to 8. Minus, minus, minus. In subtraction sign changes. So plus 500 will become minus. Plus 240 will become minus. Plus 8 will become minus 8. So your 240 and 240n cancel. 130 minus 500. Bigger number is having minus. So actually we are doing 500 minus 130. So this is 0. This will become 10 minus 3, 7. And it's 3. 370n is equal to, again your bigger number is having minus. And it is 8 minus 4.3. So here we are doing 8.0 minus 4.3. So when we subtract it, we get here 3.7. So this is 3.7. I hope you all have understood this. If there is any doubt, you can let me know in the text box. You can uh, just write your doubt and I will get back to the solution. Now, minus, minus, we can reduce students. So what we get is 370m is equal to 3.7. So if you are comfortable with point, keep it as it is. I'm going to remove it. I'm going to write 3.7 as 37 by 10. So m is 37 by 10. 370 will shift that side. It will go down. So it is 37 ones are and 37 tens are. So we get the value of m as 1 by 10 into 10, that is 100. Now we'll find the next variable n by substituting this m in any equation, either 3 or 4 or 5, whichever we find it easy. I find 5 easy because if beside 500, if I write 1 upon 5, I can easily cancel that 100 ones are 100 fives are. So I'm going to substitute in equation number 5. So our next step is put m is equal to 1 by 100 in equation 5. In equation 5. Let us copy equation 5 as it is. 500m, 500m plus 240n, 240n is equal to 8. So it is 500 multiplied by 1 by 100. In the place of m, we are writing 1 upon 100. We are writing its value. Okay. 240n is equal to 8. So this we can write 100 ones are 100 fives are. 
this 5 will go that side. So we get 240n is equal to 8 minus 5. So hence we get n is equal to 8 minus 5 is 3. 240 will go down. So it is 3 ones are 380 is are. So we get n is equal to 1 by 80. Now we'll resubstitute the values of m and n. So our next step is resubstituting values of m and n. Uh, so we'll divide the page in two parts. We took 1 by x as m and we took 1 by y as n. So the value of m we got is 1 by 100 and the value of y that we got is 1 by 80. We'll do the reciprocal. So let us do the reciprocal of this side. So here we get x equal to 100 when we do the reciprocal. And here we get y is equal to 80, our final answer. So final answer in statement we are going to write. Therefore, speed of train is 100 kilometers per hour. And speed of car is 80 kilometers per hour. So this was the linear equation in two variables sum students based on speed distance time. We have a, we have word problems based on speed distance time in quadratic equation also where we have to assume only one variable. So in the next video, I will be sharing such type of thoughts question, such type of word problems with you all, which, which comes for either three marks or four marks. And inside this word problem, as you can see that I took one sum and in the sum, I also taught you how to solve the linear equations, which are not in the linear form, where the variables are in the denominator. So how to convert it into linear, that is substituting and resubstituting the thing. So we will be taking such type of big sum, which covers every small, small topic also. So, and if you want me to solve any sum, if you have any of the sum, uh, where you are not getting the solution, you are having the doubt, you can write to me in the comment box. I will make a video of the solution and I will get back to you with the solution. Till that time, students, uh, do write the sum. First, you can write it with, with seeing and then without seeing, do practice and uh, happy learning to you all.